So today you're going to learn about how to glaze your ceramic paint palette or just glaze any ceramic piece in general. So first you want to take a wet sponge and clean your bisqueware to get any dust or dirt or any remnants of clay off. And then you're going to take your glaze, you're going to shake it really, really, really well. And then you'll pour out just a little bit. I'd rather you have a little bit less than what you need and then you get more than having too much. And so if you're going to have multiple colors, you're going to shake them all really well and you're going to pour what you need. The reason that I pour two in the center is because I want a lighter blue, so I'm going to mix them together. And then um, I'm just shaking, 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 making sure that it's shaking really, really well. And then I just am dusting it off with a paintbrush. And now I'm mixing the glaze together to get that lighter blue that I was hoping to get. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a thin coat over the entire thing. And you don't want it to be too thick because if it's too thick, it can do what's called crazing and it will basically separate. And you want to do multiple thin coats. And if you only do one coat, it's going to look really bad and it's going to be very, very streaky. So please make sure that you are doing multiple coats. Also make sure that you're filling in every single area that you want to get glazed with a certain color. So I am adding color to mine. I'm doing blue for the moon and I'm just like cleaning up everywhere that had excess blue and then I'm doing yellow for the star and I'm trying to be very, very precise so that when this gets fired and it's completely done, I don't regret like not taking enough time to get all of the areas painted exactly how I wanted. So the clouds are going to be white and I'm trying to be very careful to keep the white and the yellow separated and the white and the blue separated so that it's very clear where each of the pieces starts and ends, like the clouds, the moon, the star. And then don't forget to do the edges. It will look kind of weird if you don't do the edges. So I'm taking that darker blue and I'm putting some in the center of the little craters in the eye and the eyebrow, the nose, the mouth. I want to have a little bit of contrast. So that's why I'm taking the darker blue and adding those layers. And then I'm doing another coat of the light blue. And then um, going over that dark blue with the light blue, which is totally fine because when we're done and it's all fired, there's going to be a little bit of that contrast. You'll still be able to see that dark blue a little bit. So I'm doing another coat of the white making sure that I do another coat of the yellow. And I was like, hey, you know what? I kind of want it to be a lighter yellow. So I mix the yellow and the white together. And then I'm putting that coat on top of that yellow. And then it will blend together and it'll be very nice. And so then I'm just doing another coat and I'm making sure that I'm filling in everywhere. I'm not forgetting anywhere because if there's a spot that you forget, it's going to be very, very noticeable that you forgot that spot. And it's going to be probably a little bit frustrating, especially since you're going to have this paint palette for a long time. So then now what I'm doing is I'm taking the clear coat and I shook it really, really, really well. And then I'm going to go really slow. Like, look at how slow I'm going. But also, do you see how I accidentally filled those little, like, paint areas super full with glaze? I was like, oh my goodness, this is not what I was intending to do. So, basically, after I get a lot of the um, areas full of paint and glaze, I'm going to take those spots that are full and I'm going to scoop them out because you do not want your glaze to be that thick at all. That's way, way, way too thick. And you want to make sure that you are filling in all of the spots. So like that spot didn't get filled in and then the spot under it got filled in way too much. So I'm just trying to point out ways to do it, ways not to do it. And basically, you're going to cover the whole area and then I'm going back in and I'm scooping it out because that, that was way too much glaze. But I think that I waited a little bit too long to scoop it out because at the end, you'll see that I think that I rubbed away a little bit of that yellow and white glaze that was in the star and the clouds. Um, so here I am just glazing, glazing, glazing with the clear coat. You want to do three coats of the color and then three coats of clear coat and if you are only doing clear coat you want to make sure you do three coats of clear coat so I, after it dried I noticed wow 
there are some spots that are very noticeable that did not get that clear coat um, or the clear coat got rubbed away when I was trying to do another layer of it. And then all of these on the back, I need to get that cleaned off because if it is not cleaned off, basically what will happen in the kiln is it will melt and it will stick to the kiln shelf or stick to other pieces. And we do not want that. So you can use a paintbrush, you can use a sponge. I think the sponge works better, honestly. Um, the paintbrush is for like smaller areas, but I kind of had like a lot on the edges and I wanted to get those cleaned up pretty fast. And the sponge, it has a lot more texture, so it's easier to scrub it. And then I'm pressing on it and I noticed, oh shoot, well now I got to clear coat it again and I made sure to wipe the table off so it didn't get back on the back of it. But yep. Those spots that I had just glazed, need to reglaze them because they got rubbed off when I put it face down on the table because it was not dry. And so now I'm going to put it on my shelf where it belongs and then it's going to dry. So I have some extra clear coat and so I'm going to pour it back in the container because we are not wasting glaze around here. And then when you are done pouring it back into the container, please make sure you close the lid. And then I'm gonna clean all of my supplies. So I'm gonna take all of these and make sure I wipe down my table. And I'm gonna take all of the supplies over to the sink, okay? So dump out that water and you wanna put fresh water in it if you need it again, or you can just let it dry empty on the supply table. And then you're gonna just rinse everything out and clean everything off. And do you see how, whoops, splash all over the floor so you want to turn the water down so that it doesn't splash and then you're going to very gently you know clean out all of the little paint slots and then if you need a higher pressure for the sponge turn the water back up and then you're going to clean the sponge wring it out and then turn the water off put the sponge up on the drying rack now you're going to clean the paint brushes and then once the paint brushes are clean you're going to put them back in the paint brush little rack for the drying rack then I'm getting paper towels to clean my hands and clean the mess up that I left on the floor. So definitely make sure you clean up after yourself completely. So we'll then get fired in the kiln. And then once the kiln cools down, usually about 12, 24 hours after the firing, it will get pulled out and it just, it needs to be cooled down all the way. Cause if you take it out while it's still hot, it's going to crackle and all of your glaze is going to get all cracky. So here it is completed. It has that clear coat on it. So it's shiny. And then you can obviously see the blue, the white, the yellow, and I'm very happy with how it turned out, but there are some imperfections and I will show you those in a minute. So here it is in all of its glory. The back is not glazed though, so remember it's gonna look different than the front, okay? All right, so I'm gonna zoom in and show you some imperfections. So I got a little bit of yellow glaze on the area of the blue, and then if you see that there's some areas of the white and of the blue on the walls where just the color glaze did not stick or it got rubbed off and then it will just be the color of the clay so it's kind of peachy colored if you see all of those areas right there and then there's that yellow speck i got some yellow glaze on the blue on accident um, and you want to make sure that again there's no glaze on the back at all because if there's any glaze on the back, again, it will melt to the kiln shelf and to other pieces. And trying to get that up might break your piece. And then please make sure that the edges are glazed. If they're not glazed, it's going to look kind of weird. And when you're handling it, the edges are going to feel a little bit rough. So again, it's okay if there's some imperfections. Like all of them are handmade. There are going to probably be some imperfections. <laughs> 